My name is Alex Caserta. I recently retired from a 34-year career as a visual arts instructor in order to embark on a new adventure. As a photographer, my goal is to reveal historical information while shedding new light on the people and places that sustain our rich cultural heritage. This is an opportunity for us to discover the farms, food, and flavors of our beautiful state. This is a time for us to explore the diverse wonders in our own backyard. This is Harvesting Rhode Island. One more time because of the leaf. This is Harvesting Rhode Island. Good job, thanks. Good job. <laughs> so yeah, so um, I am the city farm steward here at the Southside Community Land Trust City Farm. And I've been uh, the farmer slash steward here for 13 years. And the idea of stewardship is something that we are embarking on as sustainable farmers, growers here. And the idea is that we're, um, we're, we're taking a lot of produce from the land, but we're replenishing the land. So we just want to make sure that we're always contributing back from what we're getting. So the, I think the, the land trust overall purpose is just to, to give people the... Um, the, to help them grow food. And so that can be with access to land in a community garden space or access to land out at an urban edge farm. It can also be a workshop attendance, uh, giving people um, access to the materials on how to grow produce successfully in, in this you know, challenging climate. It can be resources, um, giving people seeds, um, helping people get starter plants, things like that. So helping people grow food and growing it successfully in the city. How many varieties of, of products do you have here? I mean, I'm looking around and it's just so much. It's just incredible. I'd say we probably have like 80 different varieties. Rich, can you give me a little history of uh, how this organization started? Yeah, so like, um, so going back in time, there, um, in the 1960s, there was a, um, a Back to the Earth movement that was started, and a lot of people in the cities were moving out to the, to the rural areas, and they were bringing a lot of these kind of sustainability ideas, and they wanted to live off the land, they wanted to be farmers, but they found out that it was really hard, because a lot of them didn't have those skills. And, um, but there, a, a, a few years later, a lot, um, there was a resurgence of kind of bringing those same kind of ideas back into the city, and some uh, folks that were going to Brown at the time um, bought a house in the city of um, right right here, this purple house, oh. um, and this the, the this area of Providence was looking a lot like Detroit of today. A lot of abandonment, a lot of empty homes, um, so people could buy land pretty cheap, um, and they started to. Uh, tricked the house out. They put a passive solar greenhouse to grow plants. They started a garden right away. Um, they they um, they had a they put in a wood stove for heat. Um, and when they started growing food, and this is in 1981, um, right next door, next to the house to feed the the household, a lot of people in the neighborhood like were like, "Hey, we're really interested in this too. Let's yeah. you know." And so all these community gardens started popping up. So City Farm was established. Uh, the Somerset Community Garden was established. And then there were a bunch of other. Um, community gardens that were established and education was starting, resource distribution was starting right then. Um, and so right now the Land Trust is, um, has um, 18 properties that they um, look after and then are working in a network of 45, 46 different community gardens around the city of Providence working on that same kind of idea, giving access to land, giving access to resources, workshops, um, and places for people to grow food right here in the city. And I noticed you have a lot of workers over here today. Yep. Maybe you could have explain what the hierarchy is of, of the organization <laughs> so so the land trust has um basically this the land trust is a it's a non-profit and there are um basically four programs in the south side community land trust one being here at city farm one being our community gardens pro program one being the urban edge farm and one being education and today at the farm what we have is some um, um it's a it's a working farm so we've got uh, mostly a lot of the help today are um people that are here because they want to learn about urban agriculture. We have a city farm intern who um, is coming from Providence College, so he's here for the entire growing season. We have a, a, an apprentice, a city farm apprentice, another person, this is our sixth year of running an apprentice program, paying somebody to learn how to grow food successfully in the city, um, hopefully to start their own business. Um, and then we have we have two of our five high school interns, so an opportunity to give some youth some monies for school, build their a resume, um, give them some job um, training, and also with the hopes that um, they can apply this to their college applications or um, their next jobs. And volunteers. And we all, you know, volunteers are the mainstay. We've been working with volunteers since the inception. A lot of people who live in the city have a lack of biophilia experience, yeah. so they want to come to a farm. 
Um, City Farm's a place for them to come, help out, also be around in nature. Uh, we're doing some harvesting. Uh, we start off with our lettuce and then tomatoes, raspberries just went out, all kinds of edible flowers, uh, a lot of cooking greens, kales, dinosaur kales, chard. Well, I've always been like interested in like public service and stuff, and I was interested in the major, and then you kind of have to have like a focus on like, well, what are you going to do with public service? And I was just always interested in environmental stuff, and luckily there are a lot of good people at PC, you know, have connections and, you know, can spur that. Well, my mom um, volunteered when she was about my age, and um, she was coming here for a while, but um, she just started coming again um, a couple years ago. So I came with her just to see what it's like. It's just nice to like get back to like the basics and like, um, you know, learning how to grow food. Um, and it's cool just being outside and like learning about the land instead of, you know, doing like a desk job or something, I don't know. I do a lot of tomato picking. Um, there's a lot growing this season. Um, and yeah, the cooking greens are like we mainly pick them um, in the afternoon. Well, my aunt got me the job. Yeah. Um, she works across the street at the community garden. Okay. And sometimes I help her out. So Ray see me help her out. He asked me if I would like to get if, if I would like to come and work. And this is my second year here, so like I'm kind of used to it. But um, none of my I don't picture any of my friends doing this. You know, like I hang out with boys mostly, so some of my friends would rather play basketball than and then to stand in the sun and pick grains. My parents think it's great um, that I can take my time and help out, you know? Um, not even, I'm used to, not only me being used to picking greens, but like me helping out to the community and city farm too. And I would recommend this to anybody like who wants to just help out or volunteer or even come down for internship. Uh, now you also have uh, involvement with a farmer's market? Yep. So today um, we're in the process of harvesting for one of three farmers markets that we go to. This one is at the Armory Park. Very exciting, interesting farmers market. About less than a mile away from here. Uh, really diverse. It seems to represent the city really well. Exciting music, a um, lot of uh, educational tables, a lot of great farmers. So it, that's, that's what we're doing today. And then we also do the Broad Street Farmers Market on Saturdays. And then we also do the Lippet Park Farmers Market on Hope Street on Saturdays. That's an incredible. And do you sell to any of the local uh, restaurants at all? We do. So City Farm is part of a, a cooperative that was started uh, 10 years ago called the Little City Growers Co-op and there's um, six member farms, four urban, two suburban, and we, um, we've been selling uh, at the Thursday market as a cooperative, and then also we do um, restaurant sales on Tuesdays. Um, a lot of downtown restaurants is 220's Foo Restaurant, Local 121, Gracie's, Birch, uh, Broadway Bistro, the Fertile Underground, the Farmstead when they were in operation, mm -hmm. um, Cookin' Brown, uh, Chez Pascal, The Grange is a new um, buyer, U-Melt, um, Noble Knot. So yeah, we've been working with restaurants um, in the cooperative model for a long mm -hmm. time. And if the public wants to buy what you're growing, they can simply just go to the farmer's market. We encourage people to go to the farmer's market, right? Yeah. Do you have any words of encouragement for uh, younger people, maybe in their 20s, and 30s who don't want that nine to five job but really enjoy working the land and, and looking for a different type of lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, agriculture is hard work. It's not for everybody. But what I have seen in the many years that I've been here um, is that there is a youthful energy. Of, they want to, they get satisfaction out of physical labor. Um, they get satisfaction out of being outdoors. They, um, are, they're interested in food justice. They're issue, interested in the environment and they're um, interested in um, being their own bosses. So I think that agriculture is one of many ways in which young people can find um, avenues to have um, an opportunity to be um, farmers in that capacity. Um, I think it's an exciting, I think it's an exciting time for um, this work. Um, the last few years, the economic crises that has hit the country, um, agriculture is one of the few highlights of um, the economy in Rhode Island. Um, I think that there's a lot of interest in supporting farms. Um, I think that there's a lot of work to, to be done to support farmers more. It, it, if, if people are interested in physical labor and working in a beautiful setting, I think it's yeah. something to explore. Well, here at City Farm, I am a gardener. Um, I help out 
but I also do other things with the Southside Community Land Trust. Um, I've been doing the children's program uh, for this summer, which is a PASA program with the Providence After School Alliance, mm -hmm. um, where we had a group of 29 children. And this, this program is a STEM program where the kids transition uh, from the school year in the summer school, but they continue their learning throughout the summer. And they were here two days a week. Mm -hmm. And from there, uh, they were also doing some learning at school. So I speak Spanish, that's my first language. And so I was able to communicate with these children. Some of them, their, their English was uh, very rocky. So I was able to communicate with them in their own language mm -hmm. and that was a very good transition for them in the program. Mm -hmm. uh, we had one young lady that had just come from the Dominican Republic. So she was in an ESL program. Mm -hmm. So she didn't know a lot of English. She was in my program. At the end of the program, she was speaking a lot more in English, mm -hmm. but she, when she didn't know something, she was always sure to look at me and say, I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so she had that as a refuge and that was a very good thing. Yeah. Um, also because of that, I have been able to help um, the land trust in teaching different uh, beginning gardening series in Spanish or translating some of yeah. that stuff. Farming is definitely, or gardening is definitely not for everyone, right. but some of the, the kids did take away that they are going to probably start a bean patch at home or something. Uh -huh. um, some of the, the children already, their parents are gardeners. So they are doing some of that stuff with their parents. But one of the questions that we had in the curriculum was where does your food come from? Yeah. And when we sat down with the kids and started asking them, uh, <laughs> so the joke was thrown around, yeah. oh, stop and shop, <laughs> sure, so, <laughs> you know, but um, basically, a lot of them never seen uh, how the, the food was harvested. So they were able to harvest. A lot of the kids did not even know that there's a farm in the middle of Providence, which is, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with, you know, um, there's a few middle schools right around the area and those kids go to the schools and they had no idea that there was a farm right here that they can purchase food that is locally grown, that is better um, for them, like the different uh, kales or the, the different greens that we grow here are actually have a better taste because they were able to taste yeah. the difference between the stuff that you buy at the market yeah. and when they were able to harvest their own tomatoes or their own edible flowers that they, they didn't know. Their eyes open really wide and the one of the reactions is oh, wow what is that what is that what is that uh, so they have questions about everything and my favorite thing to do with them is let them taste it uh -huh. so I always that's one of my first reactions is just you want to taste <laughs> they open their eyes wide open uh, and they say yeah 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 so they walk around very mesmerized um, like, I don't know, like they've never seen something like this before. Probably um, not. And yeah. I had no idea that lettuce grows like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Joe, how did you get involved with this type of activity? Well, I grew up in Puerto Rico and uh, my parents and my grandparents, my grandparents raised chickens mm -hmm. and my father did some farming where I was allowed to go and do some work. Um, so that's something that I really enjoyed. Well, being in Rhode Island, I was looking for something and that would help me do what I wanted, what I wanted to do, the gardening and, and also help the community because I really enjoy working with the community. So when um, I learned about the land trust, I came to the plant sale. And the plant sale was so amazing. I was so impressed with all the plants growing and all the people doing farming that I wanted to be part of that. Mm -hmm. So three years ago, I found Rich and I said, can I volunteer? And the first year I volunteered and the second year they asked me to uh, come on board and 
help with the gardening and I'm a um, gardener at home so um, doing this in the community and helping other families to do the same to grow their own food so that they're healthier that's really rewarding Providence has the highest per capita of artists in the country, okay. highest per okay. capita yeah. population of artists. Um, I don't know if this connection holds water, but um, artists are accustomed to quality of materials. Yeah. They understand, like and most good artists are going to understand the difference and actually go based on their senses, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. just trust, oh, well, this one has a pretty box, yeah. you know, open the paint, see if it actually yeah. spreads bright, you know, like. Um, so I feel that there's been definitely this correlation between people who understand working with materials, uh, artists who do furniture, all types of art, uh -huh. who also understand the value of quality produce. Or, or uh, products, so, whatever and, those products or yeah, produce happen to be. Uh, absolutely. And, yeah. and, and have the capacity to make, to make that kind of, um, that kind of a judgment based uh -huh. on the, the sense experience rather than just what they've been told is, oh, you know, if it says organic, it must be healthy. Because that isn't necessarily the case, in my opinion. Yeah, that's true, um, I think. It's not that simple. Right. And I think that within produce, there's a lot of this um, sensory capacity that you need to have in choosing, in either knowing how to farm, choosing produce, even just foraging from a supermarket. You know, we provide some of that produce that, it, like, you can tell if you know how to, if you're actually looking at it and you understand what what produce looks like, you can tell that it's the quality. But for a lot of people, I think, if they're looking they at three zucchinis, yep. they might just choose the shiniest one. But that shine might actually be wax. That's what I see as far as yep. why this neighborhood has that element, is people aren't over here being accustomed to being told, this is what you're going to like right now. It's people who actually use their senses. Can you tell me how this originally started, the fertile underground, where it came from, where the idea came from to, to start things? The core behind it is around the conversation of knowing how to grow food as a life skill, as something that connects you to better health. Around that conversation, some of the folks having that conversation realized that they didn't really know how to grow even like a potato. That was something that the original folks were saying, wow, we should we should start learning this stuff because these are life skills. Right. So the original um, plan was to access some, some space in the city to start growing stuff together. Mm -hmm. um, so a, a lot was located, um, it's worked out to rent it. Everybody pulled in to chip in to rent it for the season. Okay. And then just you know, gathered uh, railroad ties and soil, and just planted it, and um, and so we grew that we grew stuff in that space for three three seasons. A few years into that process, then um, this opportunity came up because there was another um, there's another group trying to form a co-op who had written this grant uh -huh. to start this store. Um, in the eleventh hour, they backed out to on the grant, but then so a revised remainder of the yeah. grant was put out with an RFP for uh -huh. you know, proposals to yep. do to actually do something um, and at that point I just looked at it and was um, you know we had really been waiting we had really I think a lot of us had been expecting this store to open as promised and so it had been um, like a like a defined need for there to be uh, fresh access to fresh vegetables there in this neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know, it's you know, it's a good mile walk to go get any vegetables. So, so that was you know, the defined need was there of just fresh produce available mm -hmm. here. Um, at that time, it was just a major concern to me that, that there was in the place I lived, there was not even a possibility to get uh, like a you know a tomato that, yeah. that looked edible to me because yeah. um, a lot of the food in the supermarkets doesn't look edible to me even though it looks like it should it's yeah. not really food in my opinion it's not fresh um, a lot of it is just um, you know water with cellular content yeah. but it doesn't really have 
food to me is something that's nourishing. So you're, the, these people, the local community is actually feeding into what you're doing here? Yeah, oh yeah, it was no, it was no accident that this was where, I, you know, I mean, this space was already chosen and set up, as I said, by the previous folks that proposed the idea, um, and we had been in support of that, so, um, you know, it just, yeah, it just kind of, so in, in some ways it happened because there was other people before us already identifying that. I mean, this, there had been no good green grocer in the neighborhood for, I think, about 20 years yeah. from before we opened. Yeah. I looked back and, like, even 10 years ago, people were commenting, or 10 years, you know, saying, 10 years ago when such and such closed down, there was never a grocery store that reopened because of just the economic scenario. And it's it's more of a spot for a, a small market like this, in, in my opinion. It creates the, the context of people being able to come and get, uh, a, you know, a day's worth of food or a couple days worth of food rather than this whole thing of, you know, stocking up on two weeks of Putting it in the refrigerator whatever. and by the time you get to it, maybe it's not that good anymore. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, you know, things like, um, yeah, things like greens and stuff, yeah, they're coming in three times a week or, or more, you know, like with some of the um, fresh, uh, the kale and the chard and all that. So there's some of those elements of us just uh, cycling through produce at a, at a quick rate and, you know, things coming in where it was harvested this morning and it's being sold tonight. And yeah. So this is sort of one, you know, one branch of what we're doing as a group. The branch with the gardens has still been been flourishing. We had to, in the meantime, move our garden from the original space. Um, the landlord basically evicted, just kind of kicked us out because he wanted to use it then after we made it nice. So, um, so which was which was what it was. So then, yeah. but so we moved to the, we moved the garden to a new space. We still have a great um, community there. And you know, one of the things that we love about the gardens that I just find amazing is that. Um, the engagement with with everyone who walks by and pretty much like if people walk by it's not like you just walk by and look straight ahead like people yeah. will you know people people love looking at things glancing, growing seeing seeing what's going on and when you're yeah. in there if you just say hi a lot you can you can strike a conversation yeah. easy uh -huh. with people who like I don't know normally they wouldn't have anything to say so you know it's like oh hey we used to grow that in yeah. my you know in my country or whatever and yeah a lot of that goes on um, you know with the chickens and We've had, with all of our gardens, we've had folks um, folks engage and show us seeds. People bring seeds from their countries. You know, we've we've gardened with people from uh, Liberia, and there's a um, big group uh, from Bhutan, and they're that are gardening with us now, and they're uh -huh. introducing to us plants that we never, never seen heard before. Of. And they'll bring. I mean, it's very very cool seeing you know, just seeing just seeing different techniques uh -huh. and. Yeah, I mean, you know, food is the common to everybody. And that's, that's, you know, one of the reasons, if not really the core reason why I've been operating within food is, you know, it bridges environmental you know, um, awareness and real awareness of environmental issues, um, not just a outsider perspective, uh -huh. um, as well as the community, because everybody is connecting to food somehow. And... You know, it's just, you know, the context of large corporations providing our needs for us is, I think, belittling to what power that we have in our communities. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we don't have the same sway as a large corporation. We don't get to be as um, pristine and perfect and polished. But so we, we have the reality. We have the reality of what it looks like when a community works with itself to take care of its own stuff and you know it's that concept you know if everyone's sweeping yeah. their own step then everything's gonna clean up everything in everywhere you look it's gonna be nice and yeah. clean yeah um, but you know if you go and look at the stop and shop people are gonna toss a, a cup on the on the parking lot yeah. because it calls for it it's a parking lot it's not beautiful we, yeah. we clean up the fronts of our gardens yeah suddenly there's no trash yeah. And you see ones that are overgrown, and there's trash all caught up in the tumbleweeds. Yeah. It really does, I feel, work that way. And, you know, just bringing it home that it's just, you know, you look at where you are and just just start making a stand on, you know, what's relevant at the moment, not worrying so hard, at least for me, about 
what it's going to look like or what the outcome is going to be or whether it's the best possible thing or perfect you know it's it's going to be perfect just for trying and just for going and actually making something happen in the now while the idea is still fresh and relevant yeah. because you know by the time that we I don't know, like figure one yeah. thing out, there's another thing that's coming up that we didn't see about. So.